Hello everybody, we are here to talk to you today about our new Team Machine SLR family. So I am Mart, product manager for the road bikes at BMC Switzerland. With me here is Stifu, our head of R&D. And together uh, with the two of us and uh, Stifu's team and some special guests, we'll tell you all about our new Team Machine SLR. Hello everyone. The Team Machine SLR is a very important bike for BMC because we have won so many races on these bikes. And actually, we look back at the very nice history of three generation of previous Team Machine models. Actually, the first generation, we look back exactly 10 years. So we have been 10 years in the lead for race bikes with the Team Machine. We started with the first generation and this was actually the one where Cadet 11 won the Tour de France on it. From a technology point of view, it was a very important bike because we introduced the TCC concept. That was the technology behind making race bikes more comfortable. Before, race bikes have been always a chase for stiffness to weight ratio. And we realized that for Racers, especially if you want to win the Tour de France, compliance is very important. And out of that, we add the parameter of compliance to the optimization. And we were starting the development of race bikes that were not only light and stiff, but also comfortable. Then with the second generation uh, introduced in 2014, we for the first time used computer simulation to develop the shapes of the frame, but also the carbon lamination. And this optimization was done simultaneously. So it was very significant for our development and we were able to maintain the low weight, the compliance, but we were able to increase the stiffness by 40%. So a big, big step. Then 2017, we were confronted with this New brake technology, disc brakes came in, a big step, not only for brake performance, but also for frame design. And again, uh, hands to our ACE technology, we were able to introduce those new loads into the frame without adding uh, weight. So we had a bike that was still light, still stiff and compliant. But of course, now we are I would say disc brakes are established. So what is the next step? And today we are here and we have the pleasure to introduce you the fourth generation of Team Machine, which has a plus. And you will see later on what this plus is. Yeah, before we get all into the details of the new one, um, yeah, Stifu mentioned already the Team Machine has a rich history in racing, not only from technology point of view, also in racing and what better way could it uh, start then with a Tour de France win back in 2011? So yeah, we are also very happy that uh, the guy that won the Tour de France back then uh, is still connected to our brand. He's uh, one of the BMC legends and uh, he actually helped us uh, a lot um, with this fourth generation team machine. You know, test riding, uh, giving value, very valuable feedback on his part. So I would like to introduce to you uh, Cadell Evans. Uh, yeah, like I said, Tour de France winner on, on BMC. So. What person uh, is there better than him to speak about uh, yeah, the history and what the bike has meant uh, to him and his career? Um, well, most of all, the Team Machine SLR for me has been the bike that I've got nearly all, all of the best results of my career on. Um, I look back at uh, the very first generation now, 10 years ago now already, uh, how it's gone past, but I've spent a lot of time in this 10 years on every generation mm -hmm. of, of the BMC uh, SLR. It's been uh, interesting um, really following the, how technology initially has changed, especially between the first and second, where we went from great compliance to added stiffness, reduced weight, and then of course going to the addition of disc brakes. And then in, the, in, this, last, in this last generation, where we also go to an adapter for wider tires and so on. It's been um, an interesting journey to follow. And for me, it always has been a bike that's really at the forefront of uh, a bike that can perform at a high level on everywhere. And as the results speak for itself, it really has performed mm. at the highest level on, on every kind of race. Yeah, thanks a lot, Cadell. So yeah, Cadell is not only a great uh, legendary uh, bike racer, 
also um, a rider that is known for his um, yeah the ultimate ride feeling or he can really feel small differences in the frame in the components so um, we call him the most sensitive tester in the world so the first step into uh, this new generation uh, team machine slr you know how can we make the best bike in the world at the time even better right and Cadell has uh, played a, a big role in that you know giving this um, these final uh, little detail uh, touches to that and giving value, valuable feedback to our engineering team as well. So, yeah, it starts from there. Um, so for 2020 or model year 21, we can really say uh, the quest for the ultimate performance continues. So what better way we can kick off this uh, Team Machine SLR presentation than with revealing the new Team Machine SLR to you right now. Yeah, so these are the very first images um, to the public of the new Team Machine SLR. Uh, we hope you like what you're seeing. In the next um, uh, section, we will explain you all about the technology that's in the background of this great, uh, great looking bike, also the design. And uh, we will, of course, ask for Cadell's uh, help as well to explain or give um, his perspective of rider experience on the Team Machine SLR. So to start, uh, the tech technology part of this presentation. Um, yeah, some of you uh, might have heard Steve Wuman talk about ACE technology, uh, the computer software simulation software that we used to calculate basically the ideal uh, frame design based on these three parameters, stiffness, weight and compliance, right? These were the three um, parameters in the ACE technology um, simulation process. So for Model Year 21, for the new Team Machine SLR, we add a fourth, we add a plus, like Steve said in the beginning, we have ACE, but now with a plus. The plus for this year is really aerodynamics. So we have stiffness, we have lightweight, uh, we have compliance, and now we have aerodynamics brought to the table. So a fourth element in this equation uh, of ACE plus technology. So to start with the first one, Stiffness or responsiveness, as we often also talk about it, acceleration feeling. Um, the center of this characteristic is all about uh, the bottom bracket area. So the center of the bike, where you put in the power on the pedals, and it's being transferred to the frame. Um, this is really the key or the starting point uh, for the stiffness or the uh, responsiveness of a bike. So by making wider contact areas between the tubes, uh, really optimizing the layup, the carbon layup around this, um, we are able to improve on uh, bottom bracket, so core center stiffness, uh, by a, a significant, significant amount. So that being said, for a bike uh, like the SLR, which was already known, uh, yeah, famous for having a very high uh, feeling, a responsive feeling. So we were able, really like we said in the beginning, to make the best even better. The second area where responsiveness and acceleration feeling or power uh, comes into play is the rear triangle, right? You put the power on the pedals um, and then you have the drivetrain, right? Between the bottom bracket and the rear axle, there's a drivetrain in between. And the rear triangle, though the, 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 the frame, the tubes that connect these two parts um, is what we call the rear triangle. So here next to compliance, um, yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, focus on uh, acceleration power, responsiveness, and stiffness. So here we need a bit more of a combination. While in the bottom bracket area, we really focus on making it as stiff as possible. When we go to the, the rear of the bike, into the chain stays um, that go to the rear axle and the seat stays up back to the seat tube, um, that's really where we have to find the, the best balance of um, stiffness, but also compliance. But, uh, rear triangle, um, bottom bracket area are key areas for this yeah, super nice acceleration feeling that the Team Machine SLR always had. When we talk about stiffness or responsiveness in terms of steering, um, you could call it steering precision. Um, you know, being turning into a very sharp corner and being able to hold your line, um, uh, the bike is really matching uh, or going where you want it to be. You can point and shoot uh, to a corner. Um, this this right feeling, this this great feeling uh, that you can have on a road bike is really um, yeah, the result of a very high um, torsional stiffness in the front end of the bike. So head tube, fork and steer, uh, steerer tube all play together here. Of course, with uh, BMC, um, we have a lot of integrated and uh, proprietary components. It's not just the fork, the head tube and the steerer. 
there's also the cockpits, right? We design our own custom cockpits and uh, yeah, so we are really able to control um, the responsiveness or the sharp steering feeling, um, not only from the frame set, but also the components that we mount to it later. So um, the combination, uh, bottom bracket, rear triangle and front end stiffness, um, this balance of both, um, yeah, this is what the formula that's making the T-Machine SLR um, so well-rounded and so super responsive and gives you that super fast feeling when pushing power down on the pedals. So of course we all uh, we don't just um, uh, design or engineer a frame and hope it will turn out well. We also test like we did with Cadell and we get his feedback, but also laboratory testing. So the bike is put on a test bench for the frame and we can exactly to the last uh, percentage or millimeter or um, um, yeah, what other uh, parameter we use, uh, measure the stiffness and the, and the torsional stiffness and the compliance uh, in our test lab. So that's how we can put a number on the improvements that we make here, year over year. So we can tell you that both on the acceleration, uh, which is mainly rear triangle stiffness and the handling, um, shooting to that sharp corner, which is um, helped by torsional stiffness of the front end, we were able to improve both of those parameters significantly in this fourth generation T-Machine SLR compared to the previous one, which, like I said before, was already right high up there in terms of um, yeah, performance values. So, like I said, world's most um, uh, sensitive tester, right? Um, a uh, little bit of background here, the testing that we did with Cadell uh, on his home training grounds that he has trained on for many, many years. Um, he knows these, um, uh, these back roads in, in Ticino, like in his back pocket. Um, he knows every corner and uh, yeah, we could, uh, when we went there for testing, we could really see that he was really pushing the bike up to the, up to the limit and sometimes over it. So I would like to ask Cadell again to give his uh, insight or um, yeah, background info, what, how, how important is stiffness or responsiveness in a bike uh, for a, a rider or a professional rider like you were? Oh, I think for everyone, of course, we want to have a bike that accelerates well for every, every, every bit of power we're putting on the pedals, we want it to come out in, of course, forward propulsion. Um, but we always have to have that as a balance with compliance um, and going into this generation of, of the fourth generation of the SLR, the compliance is coming. We, we can get a lot more compliance out of the wheels and larger tires, tire clearance and so on. But that on this particular one, and my first impression riding was this bike is really, really stiff, yeah. which of course, it, in my mind, sprinters are going to love this bike because it is so stiff from right from pulling on the handlebars right through to the rear triangle stiffness. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, like Cadell's first word uh, after testing the bike for the first time, so like, whoa, this is the most responsive and stiff bike as I've ever felt. Um, yeah, of course, while keeping these great compliance values that the uh, BMC uh, team machine has, has been known for over the years. Compliance, we'll get to that a little bit later. Let's talk about weight first. Uh, a very important aspect uh, when you talk about a race bike, you know, acceleration is not only defined by power transfer, but also by weight, right? Um, so the bike has to be as light as possible. Um, starting there, we don't only, uh, we cannot only talk about frame set, we also talk about our components. So like I uh, said in the beginning, BMC designs a lot of its own components like cockpit, seat posts, um, yeah, very different uh, uh, characteristics for each bike, we, we can really fine tune a specific cockpit that way. So for the new T-Machine SLR, we have developed two completely new cockpits. One is a evolution of the existing ICS uh, alloy integrated stem. And the other one is a fully new uh, one piece carbon cockpit. So one piece uh, carbon uh, really, uh, yeah, to have the best, no compromise uh, weight performance uh, there. Not only components, carbon layup and the frame design are important, also the paint, right? Minimalistic paint, like you see on the bike uh, here, can really have a big influence on the total bike weight as well. We want to have on certain models also, um, yeah, very lightweight paint options, right? Show a lot of carbon. Um, so it's not just the engineers, also our graphic design team and our uh, manufacturers and everybody helps and adds uh, a little bit to this uh, weight story for sure. Then talking about the carbon itself, um, you know, 
while we added a lot of aerodynamic performance, we were still able to achieve a lower total weight. We will get to that a little bit later. Um, so this is all about finding the, the optimal carbon layup. Um, so there we really were able to achieve um, very, very good values as well. So if we talk about the complete frame set, so this is cockpit, seat post, frame and fork. We were able to save 160 grams versus the previous generation T-Machine SLR. So for a bike, a high-end, high-performance bike like this, this is yeah really a, a big, big weight saving we were able to do there. Like I said, we have these 160 grams of weight saving while improving aerodynamics, improving stiffness, responsiveness, and also improving on compliance. So really uh, yeah, great effort by the BMC engineering and design team there. So again, let's go back to Cadell. What does a uh, lightweight bike, how important is weight of a bicycle for, for a rider? Um, of course, it's um, one aspect of a bike that's very easily measurable. I hope that doesn't put it uh, out of proportion compared to also its, its um, comparison, of course, to compliance, rigidity. But it's uh, it's one thing, of course, if we can save weight, if we can increase aerodynamics, it's something that we, that we want to do because in the end it comes down to efficient, efficiency of energy transfer, where, especially uphill. As we all know, weight makes a big difference. Yeah, and we have to talk about it, right? It's the, the one thing that is a number and you can compare it. So, um, yeah, we were also very happy to announce that for a disc brake road bike, um, yeah, the top end T-Machine SLR fourth generation, it's around about 6.5 kilos for complete bike weight. So really going far below the UCI weight limit and uh, really yeah, removing the argument that disc brake bikes are heavier than rim brake bikes. So very important point there. So we have talked about responsiveness, stiffness. We have talked about weight. Let's go to compliance. Like Cadell already talked about a little bit. Uh, it's very important, right? Um, you can uh, be, have a very stiff bike. You can um, yeah, have the stiffest, lightest bike in the world. But if it's not compliant, if you really lose a lot of energy and fitness, freshness, I would say, throughout a long race, it matters um, really how you feel at the end of the race, not so much at the beginning. So compliance, the main focus area on the bike is actually on, on the more on the rear. So seat post, seat tube and rear triangles, because there is where you sit, right? And that's also where we can uh, remove um, weight and stiffness is not so important uh, there. So compliance, when we talk about compliance for a race bike, like the Team Machine SLR, of course, throughout our lineup, uh, road machine, um, or gravel bikes, there's different levels of compliance um, or different kind of uh, directions we take. We have speed compliance on our aero bikes, endurance compliance on our road machine bike, for example. On gravel bikes, we have a totally different approach with our MTT. On this bike, it's all about race compliance. So the compliance that benefits uh, the racer in the end helps him being more fresh at the end or yeah, help the rider get better results in the end. So that's what matters most. So really, like Cadell already said, efficiency, keeping the rider fresh, that's what compliance is all about for a race bike like this. Like, um, yeah, very, uh, very good to, uh, to get insights here as well. So Cadell compliance, um, as a professional rider, you uh, very well know, not only in racing, but maybe even more in training, long days in the saddle. Um, yeah, how do you feel about compliance? Um, I feel it's something I put a lot of emphasis on personally because, uh, like you said, you, you're normally winning a, 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 bit, a big professional race on the last in the last kilometre, up the last climb, and that's where um, being fresher and, and arriving more recovered is sometimes more important than some other aspects. So, so for that reason, compliance for me is really important, and that's something that the, the, the SLR is always really delivered on and something i think i'd like to think that my influence in the testing has been to make sure that this is well looked after yes <laughs> very 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 true very true so that was compliance uh, the third aspect to conclude on the uh, ace plus technology we are now going to talk a little bit about aerodynamics right that is the plus in ace plus um, really adding a fourth pillar to the equation um, yeah how we develop a high performance bicycle so aerodynamics is basically all about cheating the wind right giving the rider some free speed and um, yeah really 
focus area here is mainly on the front end of the bike because that's where the wind or airflow hits hits the rider first so down tube head tube and fork um yeah so what better person to talk about this than one of our road engineers adrien um yeah he will help us um, understand a bit better what went into the aerodynamic development of the t-machine slr yes so as Matt has uh, previously stated, uh, previous generation SLR, we have focused on uh, stiffness, weight and compliance. This time for the new generation of SLR, we have added aero to the equation. That means that we, we were able to optimize the tube shapes um, by retaining, we retained the, um, the stiffness, the good stiffness, the high stiffness, the good compliance and the low weight, but we, while still reducing the um, drag to a minimum. And this is, uh, this is particularly noticeable on the fork, for example, uh, where the properties of the fork when riding are still the same. It's still as stiff, it's still compliant enough, but the tube shape is quite, quite different and it's way more aero. On the down tube, we took a slightly different approach as we considered, because when you're riding, you're always having a bottle with you. So we considered the, the down tube and the bottle as one system. And to, for this, we developed the AeroCore bottle cage, which allows us to, to create a, a very efficient aero profile while still having the freedom to play with the tube shape. It is below the ball, uh, we have a little bit of freedom and we can, we can, we can, we can have the, the shape we want uh, to have the highest, the highest stiffness and the lowest weight, while the, the, the bottle cage and the ball creates the arrow shape. This way we were able to, to, keep, to keep the weight low, to keep the, um, the stiffness high, and to have the most efficient aero profile. Yeah, not only uh, we develop the aerodynamic technologies behind the computer, we also do a lot of testing. Um, so yeah, actually the NTT Pro Cycling team uh, has helped us a lot at our, our velodrome that is right across the street uh, from our office. And Adrian, uh, can you explain a bit more about the performance values in the end? How much? Yes. Yes, we so, so we had, uh, we had uh, team riders from NTT testing the bike. They tested, um, they tested the previous SLR and the new SLR back to back. And we were able to, to validate our simulation results. So, so we could validate that with this new bike, for an average rider, you have 3% uh, drag reduction. That means that if you're a rider that pushes, let's say 200, 280 watts on the flat to go 40K an hour, with this new SLR, you would only need to push 270 watts. That's mm -hmm. eight watts saving. Yeah, they're yeah, really great. Um, these little um, increments or performance um, um, advancements are really, yeah, really what it's all about. It's not um, just about the stiffness, the, the lightweight, the responsiveness, the compliance, but also in the end about being faster on the road. And yeah, thanks to Adrian and uh, our engineers, we are able to also measure this, right? To, to put a number on it. So talking a little bit about uh, aerodynamics more in detail, of course, or integrated cockpit, uh, the one piece, uh, the hidden cables, ICS also helps, right? There's no cables that mess with the airflow on the front of the bike. Um, but like Adrian said, uh, main focus points here were the fork, the down tube and or uh, aero core bottle cage system. So again, we go back to the real world, uh, to Cadell, uh, talking a little bit about, um, yeah, what, how important are aerodynamics for a rider? What do you actually feel? Well, what could you feel about a better aero performing bike? When um, particularly riding, uh, you really feel when you get up to higher speeds, when there's an aerodynamic advantage, especially descending. You, basically, when you're testing normally, you, you find you have to brake a lot more for the corners because the bike, the bike at higher speeds keep, keeps accelerating. But like, um, like we go back to, we're, we're trying to increase efficiency and anything that can increase efficiency whether it be aerodynamics or weight saving, 
if you can increase aerodynamics and not not increase weight or compromise mm. compliance, that's where it starts to get really difficult. But that's where I'd like to think we've made a, a big step ahead in the fourth generation. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, like Adele said, it's really uh, uh, adding another uh, great feature or great performance value to an already uh, great concept that we had. So. That was it for the frame, aerodynamics, stiffness, uh, responsiveness, and compliance. Let's move on to uh, take a closer look at our ICS technology. So like I said, for this new bike, we have developed two completely new cockpits. One is the one-piece carbon, full carbon cockpit. And the other one is a second generation ICS. We call it ICS2. So our integrated cockpit system um, were introduced in, in 2016 with our road machine and then further developed over the years. We added an arrow version, we added a short version, we added different angles. Um, we can say for this ICS2, we can really, the starting point was this new T-Machine SLR. Um, so the ICS2 stem has made not only the design, but also the performance and the stiffness uh, to be on par with the, the, the frame set. Right? It has to match or be on par with that one. So ICS2, really from the ground up, um, what you will see in the side view of the bike, for example, it's very clean. You will see no bolts. Um, it's really a more um, combined look, like right? really integrating the design language of the frame set of the fork also onto the stem. Then when we talk about our ICS carbon, Right, this was all about performance, uh, no compromise performance. So the main benefit we get out of this one piece carbon cockpit is a very low weight. Um, so you were compared to a normal conventional stem handlebar combination, we were able to save uh, yeah, more than a little bit over hundred grams, which is really a lot in the front of the bike. So not only a very low weight uh, saving was achieved, we were still able to keep fully internal cable routing at the same time. So achieving a very low weight, having a cockpit that is also stiff enough, not only for normal riders like, like you or like me, but also for our pro cycling uh, team. Um, but yeah, being able to keep all these uh, features, um, yeah, keep the bike clean and yeah, really have the stem also match the design language of the top tube and the head tube in the best way. So we are also very pleased to announce that with this one piece carbon cockpit, we were able to achieve a weight of 305 grams, which is, uh, I would say, in the, really in the top of uh, yeah, the weight of uh, the weight list of one piece carbon cockpit. So it's up there with the very best. Um, so really proud. Um, yeah. And thanks to our great, great engineering team for that one as well. So ICS2, like I said, is really an evolution of the iconic ICS1. ICS1 was really developed in conjunction with a road machine, then later used on our team machine, third generation. This ICS2 stem has really been designed for this new team machine SLR. Uh, sleek design, uh, higher stiffness and lower weight at the same time. So really, uh, yeah, great uh, performance benefits there as well. So one important point for the rider fit, um, you know, it's not only about these long stems that the professional riders use. We are also happy to say that we were able to add an 80 millimeter stem length to the ICS2 um, size range. So that means we can ev fit even more riders to, to this new bike. So we, uh, yeah, something that is very valuable for uh, yeah, different sized riders. Then talk, when, you have to, when you talk about cockpits, you also have to talk about computer mounts. Might like a, seem like a small detail to most people, but it's very important, right? It's the first thing um, that you will do when you get a new bike or when you test a bike even, is you want to put your, be able to put your own computer on there in the best looking way, right? So we uh, really set ourselves always a really great challenge to integrate the computers in, in, the, in the cleanest and best looking way possible. Um, so for these two new cockpits, we have this developed completely new computer mounts as well. They are all made out of alloy for extra durability and stiffness. So no, no uh, vibration on, the, on your uh, GPS screen. They are able to hold up in case you hit something. They are very strong, they are durable, and they really dampen the vibrations. You, you are able to uh, really see 
see the data on your screen. So both cockpits are compatible out of the box with Garmin and Wahoo computers. So that's really something uh, yeah, for the riders out there. Uh, yeah, very important point to note. So ICS, the two different versions, right? We know the benefits, it's a clean, it makes for a clean look. It has also performance benefits when we talk about the ICS carbon, for example. But yeah, let's ask Cadell again, what, what does a clean looking cockpit uh, mean for him? Um, clean looking cockpit is aesthetics, but as anyone knows who spends a lot of hours on a bike, you, look, you spend a lot of time looking at your handlebars and stem and, and to have a clean, neat looking stem, I think for anyone who rides a lot, if it's possible, they really want the cleanest and neatest looking stem possible. And I have to say with the, the one piece carbon, cleaner and smoother than this, uh, I've never seen. Yeah, cleaner, smoother and also a lot lighter, uh, right? And um, yeah, this, this stays even when you mount a computer, it still looks great and it still looks clean. So those were all the technical improvements. Those were the, the performance data, the aerodynamics. There's also many small techni techni uh, technological improvements that we were able to do on this new generation. So I would uh, ask, to, ask this to Stifu again to explain a little bit more about all these little details. Yeah, new bikes is always an opportunity to also improve the small little details that are not obvious and that you don't see automatically. Uh, it's clear on a team machine, we were focusing also on race reliability and we incorporate some of the feedback from the racing team to make those bikes better, not only for them in a racing environment, but also for you as an end consumer. Uh, one of those things is the disc brake adjustability. For instance, on the new fork, we have precisely machined disc brake mounts with a specific adapter that allows for a very, very precise and really rub free adjustment of the front brake. I think that's mm. one thing we learned with the team that this is crucial and we made a big step forward. Uh, even with this adapter and the new brake mount, the fork got significantly lighter and more aerodynamic as we have seen uh, previously. Another detail, is the rear derailleur hanger, a part that is often not looked at or only looked at when it's broken. So we made it much stronger. We increased the size of the bolt that is holding the bike that in case, for instance, you remove the rear wheel and your bike is standing on the derailleur, the derailleur hanger is not uh, breaking off or uh, bending. Um, last but not least, inside the frame, as you know, the D-shaped seat post is clamped by a wedge and you see here this silver metal piece. This is actually sitting now in the frame structure and making sure that the seat clamp bolt can be tightened uh, very safely and you have a good uh, power ramp up so you know exactly uh, which torque you are always at and your seat post is securely uh, staying in place. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stifu. Yeah, it really shows that we didn't only look at aerodynamics weights, but we really took to every little detail, uh, every rider's feedback, uh, be it a professional rider from our sponsored teams or any rider out there. Um, yeah, your feedback is always heard and we try to implement it in the, in the best way possible when we make a new product. So these technological advancements, we also have a very important last one there, which is tire clearance, right? Uh, always a hot topic when picking a new bike, how big of a tire am I able to put in there? So we are really uh, also happy that we could increase on this part. So the new Team Machine SLR family um, yeah, has a tire clearance for 30 millimeter tires. So really we see uh, rims getting wider um, yeah, because of aero reasons or sometimes people choose them out of compliance reasons, but we really wanted to make sure there are no arguments uh, that speak against our bike in terms of tire clearance. So 30 millimeter tires uh, you can fit in your team machine SLR now. So um, yeah, talking a little bit about all the engineering uh, background stories, uh, one thing that we for sure don't want to forget is uh, the industrial design and the, the, yeah, that, that comes into play when all these technical tube shapes have to be merged into one iconic uh, good looking product. So I want to ask uh, Jochem, uh, one of our industrial designers, to elaborate a little bit on the industrial design side of the new T-Machine SLR. Hi, Mart. 
All right, yes, so designing a new generation Team Machine SLR is not an easy task uh, because there is a lot of heritage that you have to live up to. This bike is very recognizable within the BMC lineup. And so, yeah, you really have to make sure that it, it follows a logical path. At the same time, of course, we are creating the next step in, uh, in road cycling. So you have to combine both respecting the heritage of the bike as well as uh, making sure that it looks like something really new, really mm -hmm. fresh. Mm -hmm. So this already starts with, the, uh, with the, um, the silhouette of the bike. You know, the first thing that you notice when you, when you look at the bike from far away, uh, like 10 meters, for example, you can really already see what bike you are looking at. And in this case, the Team Machine SLR has a very uh, distinctive silhouette. Now, we did update it a little bit to make sure that it follows the times. So what we did is we put a bit more slope on the top tube. We lowered this point right here by 10 millimeters. We did something similar with the seat stays. So the attachment point right here is 20 millimeters lower than before. And the chain stays are raised slightly. And this creates a slightly more compact, slightly more modern looking silhouette to the bike. Now, when we start looking at the details, uh, we can start at the down tube, for example. The, uh, the BMC Team Machine SLR generally has either an octagonal or a hexagonal shaped down tube. This is a really iconic look to the bike, but we have to forfeit that because of the aerodynamic requirements for the new bike. So what we did was we swapped, obviously, the shape for a teardrop shape, but we did not want to lose all of the heritage of this element of the bike, so we added a little chamfer right here that really reminds people of the hexagonal or octagonal tube shapes of yesteryear. And we merge that into the side of the head tube. This creates a really smooth, flowing, continuous surface, and it goes right into the side surface of the new AeroCore uh, front bottle cage. Now, when we move to the head tube, for example, uh, another great look of the bike is you have a very straight and beefy head tube and the fork crown dives underneath instead of flowing into the head tube like some other uh, BMC bikes do. Um, and we wanted to retain this not just because of the iconic look but also there's a weight benefit in going straight underneath the head tube. Mm -hmm. So of course all of the shapes here are new and they're a bit smoother than before but the, uh, the essence is still there. And when you move to the rear of the bike, uh, it is really important to uh, make sure that when a bike looks integrated, you actually start looking at the frame like a single piece that you start carving out. And this is why a lot of these shapes have been optimized uh, for just a smooth transition, making sure that it does not look like a collection of separate elements, but that you can really see how all these for example, the side surface comes together into the side surface of the uh, seat post. Yeah, these are all things to uh, make the design look a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, I think we can move to the top tube. And a big change compared to the outgoing and the, uh, yeah, the third generation bike is that there are some character lines going over the top tube, which converge to a more narrow area right here. And they blend into the back of the uh, of the ICS carbon, as well as the ICS2. Um, and what this signif uh, signifies is the road ahead uh, converging towards the horizon. Now, last but not least, uh, there are a few little details on the bike that I wanted to point out, which are kind of missing in this case. Uh, number one, of course, you can see there's no more hole for the axles. We now have what we call stealth dropouts. Uh, yeah, the Hole has been removed and now this adds to the cleanliness of the design. Same goes for the uh, bolts uh, of, the, uh, of the ICS carbon mm -hmm. as well as the ICS2. On the drive side side view, they are no longer visible. And if you are running a spacer, you normally would see a little cut line between the front and the back part of the spacer. That's also no longer the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all these uh, little details add to a much cleaner, uh, design which really respects uh, the Swiss design ethos. 
Yeah, thanks, Joachim. Really great insight there, right? We uh, often uh, miss to talk a little bit about industrial design, but uh, yeah, to really hear it from the from the designers uh, themselves is really uh, something great to 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 listen to. Um, yeah, like um, Joachim explained, it's not only about uh, engineering technology, um, Ace, Ace Plus technology. The design uh, part has to go hand in hand, right? And uh, yeah, the BMC design and engineering team has really found a w great way of collaborating and achieving this great result altogether. Um, I think we can clearly see and say that uh, the BMC Team Machine SLR has kept its iconic silhouette and added yeah, a very nice uh, detail shapes on top of that. So we have now seen the engineering story, the design story. We have listened to Cadell's uh, feedback and insight on the bike. Um, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the product range that we will offer for the Team Machine SLR. So we'll have two levels, O1 level and then Team Machine SLR level, a base level below that. So O1 comes with ICS car carbon cockpit, ICS2 cockpit, while on SLR we have a traditional round stereo fork and a no conventional stem. So you can say uh, O1 is high performance, no compromise in terms of specifications, um, uh, product range. While on Team Machine SLR, we really wanted to want to be very attractive to all kinds of riders with different types of budgets as well. So really something to remember, we can really offer a Team Machine SLR for everybody. We start at around about two and a half thousand, so it's really uh, not something only for the people uh, willing to spend a premium amount. So that was it from uh, the BMC team, development team here and Cadell. Um, we are really excited uh, and we really look forward to uh, yeah, great feedback once you are able to get your hands on a test bike in the near future at a test event or a dealer uh, in your area. Um, we want to end with our future outlook for the bike. You know, we have been in the lead for 10 years and we really feel that this bike um, is ready for a new generation of riders and yeah, adding aerodynamics, making sure the performance values and the design is future proof, ready to go for another, yeah, let's say 10 years. And uh, we hand over to the new riders, to the future riders. Thank you very much. <laughs>